Hello students, welcome to all. This is Dr. Vigneshwar Nekha, lecturer in Geography. Today, we shall discuss about matched and scope of human geography. For your convenience, this chapter is divided into five sections, which are as the following. One, introduction to human geography. Two, meaning and definitions of human geography. Three, development of human geography. Four, matched and scope of human geography and five branches of human geography. First, we will start with the introduction to human geography. Human geography is a wide-ranging discipline which draws together many of the strands important for understanding the world today. Human geography examines human societies, how they develop their culture, economy and politics all within the context of their hand. With the rise of globalization and the climate change, it has become increasingly relevant. Learning out my outcomes of the present chapter. After studying the present chapter, you will be able to define human geography, understand the development of human geography, become familiar with the name, nature and scope of human geography, and understand the various sub-branches of human geography. Meaning and definitions of human geography. Human geography has been defined by different scholars at various times. The earliest scholars such as Aristotle, Buckle, Ambolge and Ritter emphasized on the impact of land upon the history while modern scholars such as Rajan and Semple focused mainly on the influence of physical environment on human actions. The general agreement is that human geography focuses largely on man and environment relationships. Some of the outstanding definitions given by various scholars are as follows. According to Fred Fitzgerald, human geography is the synthetic study of relationships between human societies and the surface of the earth. Alan Churchill de Sample, the, an American geographer, defined human geography as the study of changing relationship between the unresting man and the unstable act. According to Paul Vidal de Loblache, a French geographer, defined human geography as it offers a new conception of the relationships between earth and man a more synthetic knowledge of the physical laws governing our earth and of the relationship, relations between the living beings which inhabit it. Ellsworth Odington defined the human geography as the study of the relation of geographical environment to human activities. Human geography is the second major branch of geography that emphasizes largely on the study of the interrelationships between the physical environment and socio-cultural environment created by the human beings through mutual interaction with the each other. In other words, human geography is the study of interrelationships between people, place and environment and how these vary spatially and temporally between the locations. Fred Rogel, a German scholar, wrote the famous book on the poor geography is known as the father of modern human geography. Human geography consists of human political, cultural and socio-economic aspects, though the main emphasis of human geography is not the physical landscape of the earth, it is hardly possible to discuss human geography without referring to physical landscape on which all the human activities are taking place. In human geography, we focus on vertical and horizontal relationships on the surface of earth. The vertical relationships links various elements in the same location, for example the environment and the people, while the horizontal relationships links elements in separate locations, example interplace relationships through flow of commodities, services, people and information. This discipline studies particular aspects of the society that relates to the human beings and space. It as it as a, is a social science. The third section is the development of human geography. 
the foundations of geography as we know today were laid by the Greeks which take place more than 4000 years ago. Almost from the beginning of the development, geography was allied with the philosophy in Greece. Greek philosophers began to philosophize about the natural phenomena that they observed. Those earlier discoveries were intended to map observed landscapes and spaces as explorers stored to new spaces. During the time, the civilizations of Egyptians, Chinese, and Phoenicians were initiating to discover the space, spaces and regions within and outside their motherlands. Such earliest discoveries evidence arises from the archaeological discovery of a Babylonian clay tablet map with belonging to which belonging to around BC 2300. It is found from the studies that the earlier Greeks were the first civilization to exercise a form of geography which was more than meager map making. Greek scholars and philosophers showed their interest in learning the spatial nature of physics, physical features and the woman made features found on the surface of the earth. Herodotus, a well-known Greek geographer and a historian who described about human and physical geography of the different regions of the Persian Empire and he also wrote several number of volumes on them. The actual development of human geography as a special branch of geographic study was awakened in the later half of the 19th century after the publications of Origin of Species by the Charles Darwin in 1859. The notion that, sorry, the notion that environment controls the course of human action was revived in the Western Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries through the works of Alexander von Humboldt's Cosmos, Carl Lifter's S. Gunde, and Fred G. Rogers' Anthropogeography. The works of the other great geographers like Vidal de La Blache, Jean Brunes, Deminghorn, Ellen C. Sample, Huntington, Griffith Taylor contributed to the development of human geography. We all are really and greatly indebted to the discoveries and researches of such great philosophers, scientists and geographers in their time. Though it is not possible to study every detail, according to the Chizo, the modifications shaped in the discipline of human geography can be studied in the following three phases. One, the age of exploration between AD 1400 and AD 1800. Two, the period between AD 1800 and AD 1950. And three, the period after AD 1950. Now let us talk, let us go with the age of exploration. This period is known as the period of exploration, discovery and conquest. During the 15th and 18th centuries, there has been a significant growth and development in geographic knowledge. During this period, the display of geography can be described as having been in an embryonic stage. Because of several geographical explorations and scientific expeditions were commissioned in various parts of the unexplored world. For example, voyages of Vasco da Gama and Christopher Columbus in 1942-18. In fact, the Chinese were the first in under undertaking such voyages than Europeans both land and sea routes. It is to be noted that almost all the voyages in this period were undertaken by several nations, nation states in Western Europe because they know about immediate neighbor places, she shows and people. Expecting the potential commercial returns from the resource exploitation, almost all these exploitation, explorations were financed. Besides, the commercial returns, these expeditions also afforded an opportunity for scientific investigation and geographical discoveries. 
The expeditions from Europe towards East and West parts resulted to the development of cartography, map making, and surveying, including development of map predictions. Then making of maps became essential needs for undertaking geographical discoveries and helped for resources exploration and expansion of power over neighboring territories. The cartography was important in the geography display because of the emphasis on location of phenomena on the surface, that is, location of trade routes, relief features, and structures. Behardus Fermius published an important geographic reference, namely Geographia General Generalis in 1960, 19, 1650. Venenius used direct observations and primary measurements to present some new ideas concerning geographic knowledge. This work continued to be a standard geographic recurrence for about 100 years. James Reynolds, Atlas of Bengal, that depicted the parts of the North India was another pioneering work in the period. The theory of evolution also germinated during the time. The impact of environment on the behavior of human beings started to observe and also documented in various parts of the world. The development of maps and their productions, projections influenced the methodology of geography. During the 18th century, Immanuel Kant, a German scholar, proposed that human knowledge could be organized, organized in three different ways. One area of organizing knowledge was to classify its fact according to the type of object studied. Accordingly, zoology studies animals, botany and examines plants, and geology involves, involves the rocks investigation. The second way one can study things is according to a temporal dimension, example knowledge of history. The last method of organizing knowledge involves understanding facts related to spatial relationships, that is, knowledge of job. Similarly, Kant also divided geography into several subdivisions, subdisciplines. He recognized the following six branches physical, mathematical, moral, political, commercial, and theological geography. The second period is the period between AD 1800 and AD 1950. In the 18th century, based on the knowledge acquired through expeditions and voyages, various philosophers and scientists started to work on scientific writings in geography. The discipline of geography experience, experience study out in Europe and the United States. As a result of this, the display of geography became more separate in the subject matter. There have been emerged a several number of societies that are intended on issues related to geography. Alexander von Humboldt, Carl Richter, Perji Rogel laid the foundation of geography as a scientific branch of knowledge. They also made exclusive contribution to human geography and physical geography. The period of Humboldt and Ritter was called as the classical period of modern geography. Humboldt's publication, Cosmos, in 1844, studies the geology and physical geography of the earth. Humboldt's work became to be a milestone contribution to the geographic scholarship as it was considered by the several academics. Due to their contribution in geography, it was taught in universities and the tribes of geography were started to open in many universities in Europe. As a result of this, Karl Ritter was appointed as first professor of geography in Berlin in 1820. Perhaps Rogel, in his work Anthropogeography in 1882, he realized that the distribution and the culture of the Earth's various human population was stalwartly stalwartly impacted by the natural environment. The two schools of thought that emerged in this period, namely environmental determinism and the possibilism, an effort to elucidate 
the relationship between man and his environment. The environmental determinism school of thought promoting such as Mackinder, Alan C. Sample, and Hettington believe that the impact of natural environment in shaping human beings and their actions and activities. Social Darwinism impacted by the environmental determinism which rationalizes the imperialism and racism on the basis of survival of the first fittest. Alan C. Sample, a disciple of Frederick Rogel, emphasized much on the impact of physical conditions that molded the woman actions and activities. Sample viewed that the role of women was passive in the relationship with the environment, taking a sign of environmental determinism. The contribution of Huntington to human geography by his work titled The Principles of Human Geography stated about the environmental determinism focusing on climate largely as a main factor that molding society, culture and history. In developing countries, human beings are vulnerable to natural disasters such as droughts, famines, floods, and earthquakes, etc., as they are as they surrender to nature under such natural conditions. The best example is nomadic pastoralism. Nomadic pastoralism is so much dependent on the natural environment. According to possibilism of school, possibilism school of thought, all human beings generate their own opportunities by altering environment within the limitations set by nature. Paul Vidal de la Blache, who instigated the idea of possibilism, saw the environment as a limiting factor rather than as a deterministic force. So, another protagonist of possibilism, for example, argued that Culture was important in determining human actions and activities on the surface of the earth. George Perkins Marsh gave a powerful presentation on the role of human actions in altering the natural environment. The human activities include land conservation, conversion by deforestation to various purposes other than agriculture. Griffith Taylor started the idea of stop and go determinism or neo determinism since human beings as active but having an approach to go ahead in tune with the nature. Over actions and activities are supposed as trophic regulators which can alter the nature with the help of technology but with the limitations set by nature or with watch the opportunities logically to move in the direction of friendly environment. There were many other early philosophers and geographers contributed to the development of human geography within ABO approaches, environmental determinism, possibilism, and neo determinism. For example, Aristophan, Ochamo, and Hessner, German scholars, significantly contributed to the human geography by mounting its scope through their various works, mainly focusing on the interactions between human beings and animals. Ochomo, particularly in his book Manual on Human Geography titled Anthropogeography, Anthropogeography, emphasized on the original approach to the study of human races and how humans adapted to different ecological conditions. On the other hand, Hagner emphasized on the population geography as an important sub branch of human geography. French geographers like Vidal de la Blache, Jean Brunes, are also I'm the French School of Geography, contributed to the origin of economic geography as a branch of human geography by incorporating population data, settlement types, patterns, and open occupations in the scope of the display. Jefferson and Semple, American geographers, expanded the scope by including population problems where other disciplines such as economics, sociology, and history were concerned about. The third period is the period after AD 1950. Up to the 1950s, there was a very slow pace of a new development in human geography. Before this period, human geography was more of an art subject 
where facts were established by casual observation in the field rather than by careful measurement and hypothesis testing. The theoretical perspectives were what came to be known as environmental determinism and positivism. In 1950s, there was a new development in geography where F.K. Suffer began a move to find out laws that explain general phenomena of geography, more particularly within the field of human geography. With the help of laws, there is a philosophy possibility to envisage what will happen if we can foresee successfully it would be easy to plan and control possible variation and patterns and distribution of spatial human behavior. The spatial variations or the chorology was the mostly studied knowledge in geography. In response to, in response to this and environmental determinism, quantitative revolution as another approach of human geography emerged in the 1950s. In other words, the focus began to change to locational analysis and quantification of human spatial phenomena. Several geographers increasingly promoted the statistical techniques and mathematical models that are used to explain and predict the casual relationships in geographical research and to synthesize data about human activities. The more emphasis on methodology and statistical techniques is with the increasing help of computing machines like computers in this display which is come to be known as the quantitative revolution in geography. It is termed as a revolution since it marked a new starting in the way the subject matter of geography was to be studied. After received an impetus from, impetus from the debate by F.K. Soffer on which he published on which he published an article on exceptionalism in geography, the discipline geography started to becoming spatial science. During the booming time of quantitative revolution, there was a new wave of geographical thought began in human geography as a response to ex excessive quantification and positivism. This geographical thought is associated to social and welfare geography to start with the radical, radical geography which is based on the Marxist approach. Sometimes it is also known as Marxist geography. The second revolution after the quantitative revolution was referred to as the radical revolution. Quantitative revolution was though thought to be less concentrated on human problems. Consequently, a radical revolution took place where emphasis shifted on contemporary issues related to problems of human beings such as environment, poverty, hunger, deprivation, malnutrition and health crime, income distribution, racial discrimination, deprivation in education and social inequality etc. This was emerging from social unrest and advocated for the study of equality and justice. The new approach emerged at the end of 1960s referred to as the welfare approach. The new developments contributed to emergence of a new subdisciplines of human geography such as biological geography, social geography, welfare geography, humanistic geography, and radical geography. In a radical geography. In 1980s, human geography began receiving more exposed to the philosophy of science, humanities, and social sciences. Human geography began to show more emphasis on current issues such as socio-economic and political conditions across the nations. This is because of emergence of new subject matter of geography such as geopolitics, development and development, inequality, social justice, health, education, gender, etc. in the core background of physical environment, cultural landscape, space, place and scale. In the late 1980s, there are new developments in human geography, namely postmodern geography and postmodernism. Postmodern geography has started in late 1980s, which reiterates the importance of space and place in research. 